coast. When you think of sun and sand, holidays in the Caribbean are usually what spring to mind. But have you ever thought about solar panels instead? The main ingredient that makes them work is silicon or sand which comes from rocks found in a quarry like this. It's out of the quarry and into the fire. The first stage is to get the silicon out of the rocks and that's done in this enormous furnace. Temperatures reach well over 2000 degrees Celsius. This is unbelievably hot and also quite dangerous. To keep their eyebrows safe, the men work the ore using long poles. Silicon is used to make everything from window glass to the processes in your home computer. And without it, a solar panel just wouldn't work. Huge barrels are used to carry it around the factory. Nothing else could withstand the immense heat involved. In this form, it is liquid molten silicon, but to make solar panels, certain chemicals need to be added to it. First, the ore needs to be crystallized, which occurs here in this cooling machine. The silicon is so hot it could melt right through it, but the boffins have come up with a solution. Cold water is pumped round it as it works, which acts like watery air conditioning. The super hot crystallized silicon emerges from the machine. But how will this help to harness energy from the sun? Solar panels are made using thin slices of silicon which have two unique layers in them. These are created using two chemical processes which affect the silicon at different times during production. Time for stage one. This is where the first chemical is added. It will help make the silicon more conductive. To get the two combined properly, the tank is sealed into a large furnace and left for two days. It's like cooking a big stew and the chef keeps a close eye on his recipe. When the buzzer rings, the cooking is complete. The furnace is opened and the silicon block emerges. This block would be far too big to put on your roof, which is where solar panels usually go. The average roof wouldn't support it, so now it needs to be cut down to size. Cutting solid crystal isn't like cutting butter. It can be very dangerous, so a protective shield is raised to keep workers safe. Diamond tip blades then slice through it, cutting individual panel sized columns ready for the next stage. The columns are now the right size, but they are still far too thick to convert the sun's energy into electricity. So they need to be cut down even further by this machine. It has hundreds of spinning wires which slice their way slowly through each column. What they leave behind is wafer-thin sheets of silicon crystal, perfect for solar panels. The slicers must be separated to be cleaned, but no machine exists that's sensitive enough to do it without breaking them. It must be done by hand because the panels are barely fingernail width and incredibly fragile. Wherever humans are part of a process, contamination follows because we release millions of dust particles. The freshly cut slices must now be thoroughly washed before they can be treated with the second chemical. Once the treatment is in place, the panels are returned to the furnace and baked to create the two separate layers. No, this isn't a pattern for a new kind of urban camouflage. It's the basic unit that makes up a larger solar panel. It comes in two different colors, but this isn't a fashion statement. The blue shade is added so the panel can absorb more light and make more energy. Panels are also treated with an anti-reflective coating which is painted on and then baked into place. Any light the panel reflects would simply be wasted energy. Now the panels are clean, properly treated and wearing this season's colours. They're ready to make electricity, but how do you get power out of them? High-tech computers align the panels and the next machine paints a layer of this grey gunge onto them. It looks like bad school custard, but it's actually semi-liquid metal. It helps conduct energy from the panel into the electricity grid and through a plug into whatever appliance you're using.
we can now assemble a full-sized solar panel. Each wafer acts like a battery that generates its own electricity. But to get power out, the panels are assembled in rows connected by metallic pathways. With neat rows all hooked up, the machine can put all the pieces together. It's like making a gigantic chip butty, only the chips are made of silicon. A large slice of glass makes the base, followed by layers of adhesive paper, the silicon panels, and more adhesive to hold it in place. The final layer is the frame to hold it all together. Even though English weather isn't always sunny, solar panels can work in our cloudy conditions. They just need to be cleaned, installed and plugged in. So as Britain's summers get sunnier, solar panels will work to help us cut down our harmful carbon emissions.